Good evening, sir. Yo, this is episode 91 of the Beef and Bitcoin podcast with your host, Brett and CH. Today's topics, uh, this is probably my favorite thing that's happened so far in 2020 was um, the author of the Harry Potter series, J.K. Rowling, was tweeting about Bitcoin and the whole thing was just a huge mess. And, you know, we're going to go over that. And there's a couple topics around celebrities and Bitcoin and, and what that what that might look like in the future. I think it's a fun topic to talk about. Uh, the next thing is hash rate futures seem to have launched on FTX. Uh, I think this is a pretty big deal, probably not so much in the short term just because it's brand new, but the idea of hash rate futures in in the long term and uh, miners being able to properly manage their risk regarding um, how much hash rate they're putting out and maintaining profitability and surviving bear markets, I, I think it has huge implications. And then last but not least, um, QE Infinity is just continuing. It looks like there's another coronavirus or a leaf build that was is being passed for like another three trillion dollars. So money printer is absolutely going burr. But the real question is, what happens to stocks, right? Because um, I think that's on the top of everybody's mind. What happens to U.S. equities if money printer continue to go burr? And, um, you know, it hasn't always worked. If you take a look at some of the other countries that have been going through some crazy monetary experiments for the last few decades. So I th that'll be a fun topic to riff on here at the end. But, yeah, man, how you doing this week? I'm doing good, man. It's it's tough to tell, man. The, the money printer bur go burr is uh, inspiring the bull side in me in equities, especially when you hear everyone with a suit and tie on CNBC and Bloomberg saying that we're forever bear market. And part of me thinks that that just, we can't we can't go bear market now. We have to go up. It's the only way out of this is pain go up. And it, it's completely against all fundamental narratives. I mean, think about it, dude. With each few million unemployed, the NASDAQ climb, like, NASDAQ climbs like 1 million. I think the NASDAQ's climbed like close to, let's see, I think like 36% or something. Let's go find out here. Yeah, like the peak 37%. So, but it's at 34. So we can break it down to roughly for each a million unemployed, the NASDAQ is one of 1%. It's, it's a pretty, no, I know that sounds insane, but that is what happened since the March bottom. It sounds ridiculous and absurd, but that is what's happening right now. So, yeah. I, like obviously liquidity is really what matters and that this is showing but uh i'm telling you that like we could be at 9700 really quick that's a chip shot away like <laughs> that's all of six percent away i mean that's like and we've done that in like a day so i i don't know crazy times ahead that's all i yeah, know <laughs> for sure um yeah oh, celebrities and bitcoin dude this was too funny this uh, is rough so for those of you who are not on Bitcoin Twitter, just watching all the madness happen, um, the the author of the Harry Potter series, J.K. Rowling, was pretty much drunk tweeting like last night about Bitcoin and then she didn't understand it and was asking people to explain it to her. And you had every Bitcoiner come out of the woodwork <laughs> to like try to explain it to her in one sentence or in a tweet. And it's... Uh, even Elon Musk gave it a shot, which was hysterical. He actually didn't do too bad of a job. He talked about how it probably has a better track record than central banks, which, um, you know, at least I can tell he's thinking about it correctly in terms of it's not like a not for payments. It's for a, an entirely new monetary system. So I thought that was uh, interesting to see. But I mean, this this showed me a couple things, man, like. It is not easy to explain Bitcoin to anybody, whether, whether they're technical, whether they're a celebrity like J.K. Rowling, um, whether it's your parents. Uh, I think the only people who really get it quickly is like a child because they're just their mind is so open to new ideas. Like you could explain it to a kid really quickly and they'd be like, oh, yeah, perfect. Like I could see how that would work. Why would you guys use money that the that the government prints? That's pretty stupid. Like they can get it right away. But trying to explain Bitcoin to anybody in a sentence or two is just so difficult. And it's probably because it's a brand new idea. Like 
uh, scarcity on the internet or in, in from in a digital form has never really been possible, right? When you send anybody a, a picture or a text message or anything else, it's a copy and like you have one on your phone or on your computer and then you send that to someone else. It's the same thing with email. But to abstract away and to kind of let someone think about, well, well, no, in this case, actually, we're talking about something scarce. Like if I send you this, I don't have it anymore. And in a digital sense, I think that's, I guess I'm used to it now because I've thought about it for the last three years, but it is a little mind blowing when you try to put it that way. Do you, do you think it's just, it's just too weird of a thing right now to try to explain to somebody? Um, it's well, yes and no. It depends on if someone's ready to really, I guess, red pill themselves on the history of money. And, the, and I mean, I, I think I, I don't know. I don't think I'm the smartest person in the world or anything like that. I am pretty dumb to be honest, but I do. I think I do a pretty good job sometimes connecting history with with certain people because I've talked to people about the subject before that are like per se normies, you know, just friends or other stuff, where people are interested, like, um, and trying to explain, like, show them like what the history of, you know, taking like what going from a gold money to a fiat currency has done to our world. You know what I mean? Because there's a lot right. of people out there, and if you can kind of put history together and give them pieces, like, okay, look what happened after we went to fiat money. Fucking, you know what? 20 million people roughly died on a, that's just an estimate for World War One. It, it, it ranged from 16 million to, you know, higher, but so, and you look at, you know, World War One. there's so much more, the war just didn't end, there was, you know, ethnic cleansing on all sides, like, it's terrible, and then same thing happened in World War Two. like, fiat money enabled this, you know, the people, right. you know, it's like, it's just, it's, it's just, I mean, that's just the reality, and, um, and you see it happen after, and that's, that's the that's the way I've explained to people in the past, but I, I want to get onto the J.K. Rowling not loom dark thing because I haven't cried in a while from laughing, and I had. <laughs> so if you don't know, loom darts like a crypto trader guy who's been around for a while. Uh, just posts always funny shit, and somehow managed to troll the CEO of uh, Coinbase, Brian Armstrong, <clears throat> on his. I guess he has like a backup account. It's not loom dart; is the at. But he, you can like on Twitter, you can change your name to like. JK Rowling and change your bio. Like I was playing around with it earlier. The page is this is JK Rowling with the actual like um blue check mark or white check mark in this case. Um and here is not Loom Dark. Same exact page. And you know, it did everything. It's just hilarious. But Brian Armstrong legitimately thinks it's her. And I, he hasn't responded at all to this. And this is a like complete farce. Welcome to crypto. Grab a Coinbase account when you're ready to use it that Bitcoin parentheses not just hold it and then get into any of of the many other cryptos out there and then has like the fucking okay sign with the fingers um but basically the tweet oh i didn't read the jk roll into which is not Lindar. it's okay okay you guys win i just bought my first bitcoin and then it's like confirm your bitcoin purchase of 100 dollars. but it's just it's absolutely hilarious that he didn't look at the ad and just responded and the comments on this are just astounding it's like no one tell him and it's like ladies and gentlemen we got him and they're just people are just and he hasn't deleted it and it's been up for three hours now at least <laughs> yeah pretty much <laughs> but the, the the jk rolling tweet somehow managed to get thirteen thousand likes and it's a fake account <laughs> yeah it's hysterical it's it's too funny i think this is a good time to point out that um, crypto scams 100% work because yes. if this were any other circumstance, <laughs> you're looking at JK Rowling's and maybe they have a link to something like, oh, double your Bitcoin by clicking on this link. And, you know, yeah, people God. will fall for this kind of thank stuff. Thank God and it was Loom Dart and not someone else, like, actually trying to scam people. I mean, if with 1,800 retweets and 13,000, over 13,000 likes, this would have scammed hundreds of people easily. Exactly. Now that's being conservative. You know, yeah. <laughs> Dude, the amount of people, it's, it's mind-boggling. How, but then I think about it, like, like if I go back to normie mind, you know, me, like, four years ago, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I don't think I would have fallen, just sent people money, but, like, then you realize there's a lot of people out there who are just completely normie-minded. You know what I mean? Like, and just have no experience with any of this. Yeah. And it no, it's, it's really hard. It's hard because I've gotten DMs from people who've gotten scammed and they're like, oh, you know, I, I sent my Bitcoin to this guy. They're a trader and they told me like they'll I'll earn 
a um, week. If, yeah. So, it's, I mean, it's pretty I just, obvious. I mean, to, to, I guess most people, but some people, yeah, they're like, they actually believe it. And I, I guess it is believable in some cases. In this case, well, it, it proves is. It. And, in this, and it, this case, it, it proves it. I mean, yeah, the CEO totally of, of, of one of the largest Bitcoin companies got fooled. Right. Let's um let's keep going on this celebrities and Bitcoin topic because I uh, it's something I do think about pretty often. Um, Didn't someone else tweet you, about uh, some UFC fighter tweeted about Bitcoin the other day? It marked the ben, top. Ben Ben S. Not Ben, ben not Ben, not the wrestler. Uh, it was another one. It was uh I can't think of his name. It was there's another UFC oh, yeah, guy yeah, tweeted yeah. about no, it. I know what you're talking about, but it, it totally marked like the local guy. top. Yeah, yeah. And it was just like uh, what's his name. Did we mention Peter Paul Tudor Jones completely marked the local top the other week too? Yeah, we talked about that last yeah. episode. Yeah, I'm pretty okay. That's what I thought we touched on it. Like, yeah. Um, the the celebrities and Bitcoin thing is interesting though. Like, do you think do you think celebrities matter in terms of uh, like not mass adoption, but you you know what I'm saying? Like getting people more interested in Bitcoin yes, and stuff like that. Because when someone's celebrity tells them to do something, they follow them. I mean, it's just like, I'll give you a perfect example. Look what happened with coronavirus. No one wanted to wear a mask early on. No one cared early on. There was no big deal. And now everyone's wearing masks. People wear masks when they drive. I see people wearing masks on the beach. I see people wearing masks in convertibles. I, I see people wearing masks riding bicycles. I haven't worn a mask in a while, to be honest. Uh, guilty as charged. I wore a mask before everyone did because I was a little concerned because we didn't know. But now that the data is out there, I'm not as concerned anymore. And that's, you know, where I'm at. And my point is with that is just look how, look at what my point getting back to the original point is like people had to be told by certain people, whether it was like the Trump administration, whether it was, you know, a certain Democratic senator, representative, I'm using both sides of the aisle here. You know, it could have been someone on Fox News. It could have been someone on CNN. It could have been their favorite radio host. You know, it could have been their local, you know, mayor. It had to be some authoritative figure, authoritative, excuse me, to tell them that, hey, you know, mask. You need to wear masks now. It's like, you know, they they had to wait for someone instead of just doing the research themselves. You know what I mean? But yeah, I I think you made a good point. I was I was trying to work through this in my mind, how important it is. On one hand, I think it's super important, right? Because you can just onboard millions of new people very quickly, um, depending upon like the level of fame or. Twitter celebrity, Instagram celebrity, anything like that, or like The Rock has a ton of followers. Like I can, I can just imagine um, him being interested in it, and then all of a sudden, an entirely new group of people gets interested, and that's great. But on the other hand, sometimes I think it doesn't matter because the only thing that does matter is that the price goes up, and that convinces people yeah. without anybody having to tell them anything. <laughs> that's why the UFC fighter jumped in. It's- <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So it's like I I, I want to see more celebrities get interested, um, not because of the price, but like for the for the right reasons, either if that's educating people about, um, you know, monetary history or things like that. And I've even heard uh, people like Dan Held have, have talked about this is how do you start teaching people about Bitcoin? And his point was, you know, maybe it's better to talk about their relationship with money currently and like government money specifically and your your relationship with the government and maybe there's mistrust there or you can point to certain things that have happened um, with monetary intervention and all the bad things that have happened so like you kind of start to break that apart it's like what's so good about state money anyway and then after they've question a few things or they've gone on like WTF happened in 1971 and you're like, oh, that's weird. All this crazy shit started happening right when the gold window closed in 1971 and all these terrible things have happened since we have went off the gold standard, like wages not keeping up with inflation, education costs just going through the roof. Here's one you can see on the screen here, productivity and output versus um, compensation for employees. I mean, there's your wealth inequality gap right there. Output has remained on a steady clip, yet people are making so much less, uh, relatively speaking, than um, they did in the past. Even I know that in my industry, I will never make the same amount, even in nominal terms, for 
that my boomer coworkers make. Some of these people are making a quarter million dollars a year and they can't even convert a Word doc to a PDF. Yeah. But, uh, like, <laughs> but I know like um, the, the next wave of people isn't going to – they're not going to get to a $250,000 salary. It's just not going to happen. They're not going to pay us the same that they paid them. And that's not including inflation. Like these people have been getting paid a quarter mil for – like two decades already. Oh fuck, man! And like, you know what that's, I mean? So that's like, that's cushy. That's cushy if you're smart. That's cushy. It's a lot, dude. So like, yeah, that, I know, dude. That's why you're raking in a mil, a mil a year for, or a mil every four years for yeah, twenty and, years. It's five and, mil. That's just your income. Imagine you're making a quarter mil in like the early nineties. I know, dude. Yeah. Like as long as you didn't really fuck it up, like you should, things should be fine for you. Yeah. No, but literally, like, you should be fine. But yeah, you no, know, it's millennials aren't going to make that much quickly in their career. Like by the time they're 40, the majority of them are not going to be making that much money. No, um, it's... just, just, just because it, it is what it is. They don't want to pay all that much. So it's not like we're making, um, double what we would have made 10 years ago because of inflation. That's like not even being factored in. But if you can attack, if you can use that as your argument and not even mention Bitcoin, and then so, oh, yeah, you know, you start to realize a couple of things or you're right. Like, I remember when I used to pay five dollars to go to the movies. Huh. That's weird. It's 15 now. And then you can start hitting them with, well, why do you think that is? And if the light bulb starts to go off there, then I think the pitch becomes easier. So I, I think if you can, can and then to bring it back to celebrities, I almost want them to get orange pilled in that direction. Right. So orange they can, pilled. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like like Vince yeah. Vaughn, you know, the libertarian guy who, uh, you know, famous actor, hysterical. I didn't know he was into Ron Paul shit and he like helped him with the campaign and stuff back in 08 and 2012. I was like, oh, that's that's pretty cool, actually. But somebody like that where they start to get it and they want to end the Fed or whatever else. I think it's a it's a good pitch. No, I, I agree. I think it, we're 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 in for an interesting time ahead. And I think, again, that. You know, I as I said before on this podcast, I'm usually not an optimist, and I've become more optimistic since this has happened, uh, since this the coronavirus has happened, because I think more people are waking up and just kind of. I feel like at least Americans, I feel like more this unified more people and made them realize, you know, one we're a country together. But and and hopefully this helped other countries too, because I know we have some non non American listeners too. Um, you know, just wake up to the reality that you know of rights and whatever and then also you know a need for look what just look how quickly everything just got stripped away from us right like across the board you know and this just what it wasn't just america this just wasn't just western nations this was every fucking country in the world besides like sweden sweden and like one other country didn't like shut down everything you know sweden just had no groups larger than 50 right right no it's it's uh it's interesting but yeah it, it's it's nice to hear you become optimistic in certain things, and I know it's it's good that you're the more the pessimist or the I'm contrarian just such the a majority pessimist of the time. For most of the time, it's, uh, I'm just like it, fuck you know, everything. <laughs> it's like it's fun to be pessimistic, and then on the other hand, it's like sometimes it can be frustrating yeah, too. Yeah, no, um, it's like I'll see, it, well, like we have like 35 million people just more just got unemployed. And it's like you and I talked about this for like weeks ahead of time. We're like, oh, fuck, look at this thing. And it's like, you know, we just sit by idly as this giant fucking tidal wave or tsunami just washes the city. Like as we're sitting on like, you know, a hillside watching it happen. But no one notices. You know what I mean? That's what it felt like. <laughs> totally. Totally. <It's, laughs> it sounds terrible. That's really exactly what it felt like. I just watched this fucking tsunami just wreck our society. But it was it was it was very obvious to people who looked into it, you know. It was like, oh, this is kind of serious. And then, like, look where we are now. Right. Oh, yeah. It's crazy. You know, one more question on the celebrity topic. Uh, which celebrity would you want to see get into Bitcoin to help drive adoption? If you had to pick one that could maybe get the most reach or have the biggest impact, who, which one do you think you'd pick? Mm, mm, that's a good question. That's, like, tough. Like, you know, where do I go? Um You know, I feel like you could say obviously someone could say like Joe Rogan's a good one because he has such a cult following, or you, could, mm. you know, or you could say someone like Matthew McConaughey because he, you know, he has such a diverse following. You know, men and women, obviously. And but it's just I don't know. You know, there's a lot of people that you'd say you'd want to. Um, Donald Trump. <laughs> there you go. That's your, that's, your, that's your answer. That or Steve Mnuchin. 
<laughs> Stevie boy. <laughs> that that's the or, or I guess Jerome Powell. That's yeah, funny. There's, there's, there are answers. I give you three answers, but yeah, it'd be pretty funny. I don't have a good answer for this. I know I think, it's uh, tough. You put me in the spot. There Mark, like... Mark Yusko had a good answer to this question. He said The Rock, and uh, I was like, "Oh, that's a pretty good one because he's very neutral. He's got a ton of followers. He's not 100 um, white. He's very neutral. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, not in terms of it's like anybody likes The Rock, right? Like who doesn't like The Rock yeah. almost? And uh, you know, I that's an interesting choice, and I think. <laughs> yeah, you know, Mark's thinking when you, when you, properly <laughs> about that kind of stuff. When you, you know? when you were saying Mark earlier, I thought you were gonna say Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> uh, but yeah, then no, you would I, say Mark Yusko, and I was like, oh. Marky Mark, yeah. Marky I don't know. I, I think I still need to give it some thought. I think Rogan's a good answer. I think The Rock's a good answer. Um, I mean, Dennis Rodman sponsored what was it, Popcoin? Yeah, yeah, something like that. <laughs> I think. Pop, yeah, Speaking yeah. I don't know. It's. Um, I'm gonna think about it some more, but I think that's a good. Um, those are good answers. Somebody said Oprah too, and I was like, "Oh, that's an interesting one." You know, I don't know what kind of reach Oprah has anymore, but um, she definitely still has millions of followers and people who who like her. But I could see that being a being a half decent one. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Dennis Rodman definitely did the there whole. Pot he thing. starts in Singapore. Potcoin dot com. Dennis Rodman coming out of left field to connect North Korea and the U.S. with Trump and Kim Jong. So funny. It's just like what a time to be alive. It really is. Like, <laughs> Speaking of time to be alive, let's talk about these half straight futures. I think this is uh, this is pretty big news. Um, so to quickly just for those of you who don't know what the hash rate is, the hash rate is um, the amount of computing power that is <laughs> being uh, – I guess, used by the Bitcoin network, right? So all the miners, when they add new mining rigs to their mining farm, that is increasing the hash rate because there is more um, more hashes uh, attempting to find the next block, right? And as the hash rate goes up, the profitability of all miners should go down, right? Because um, they are becoming less likely to find a block unless they are, of course, the miners who are adding hash rate to the network. But uh, we've seen hash rate really take off right around the start of 2017. Now, if you if you go back in history and think about the hash rate, it was um, you could you could mine bitcoins right on your laptop, and it was no big deal because the hash rate was so low. And then it moved to GPU mining, and then it moved to FPGAs, and then it moved to ASICs, and those those ASICs are um, application specific. Integrated circuits, I think, is what it yes. stands for. So basically, like, it's the only fucking thing uh, ASIC can do is mine Bitcoin. Like, it can't do anything else. It is a single purpose um, piece of technology or computer. Uh, and that's a good thing, right? You want that to become commoditized. And you can really see if you're watching on the screen here that it just, the hash rate took off in 2017, right? That was that that first real bull run of ASICs and the hash rate just completely took off and it even kept going into 2018 even after the crash because all of those people were getting their mining rigs during the bear market because they ordered them months ahead of time yeah, right think, they, yeah. they were trying to add all that hash rate oh come on baby this train is moving like we're gonna make so much money order mining rigs mining rigs mining rigs and then you finally had that minor capitulation in uh at the end of 2018 right when we dumped back to like 3200 the miners said all right enough is enough we gotta we gotta turn off these rigs because we're it's not profitable and then it's literally skyrocketed since then and i think you know of, I'm, 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 oh, no, go I, ahead. I was gonna say think about um what was gonna you know the backlog of stuff and especially towards the second half of 2017 probably i'd say july august and just threw that into you know the winter where, you know, whether it was hardware wallets, whether it was Trezors, Ledger, Nano S, et cetera. Um, and then obviously, like, gaming, you know, I, I remember people, like, I wasn't as much into gaming at the time, but I remember people were you're complaining in like, the PC gaming world because you couldn't get GPUs because people were buying GPUs to mine right. mainly cryptos because obviously at that point, Bitcoin was all ASICs for the most part. But um, it is, it was pretty crazy to see that happen. And then obviously, then in 2018, the market got flooded with GPUs that people didn't need anymore, you know, because right. a lot of coins became worthless, you know. Yeah, for- no, 
No, it's pretty. It's pretty crazy. Like you just couldn't get anything that you needed in no. 2017, and uh, you can see that lag time of. You know, when the Bitcoin price goes up, what that's doing is that's sending a signal to entrepreneurs to say, oh, hey, something's going on over here. And then people are going to either start businesses, they're going to buy Bitcoin, they're going to mine, they're going to invest in something with the, the the price signal is telling them, right? So if the price goes up, that means time to move over there. Let's, let's see what we can do. And um, it's totally natural. But you can see how that lag time really can get people into trouble because – you're, I guarantee the uh, the majority of the ASICs were being ordered probably in November and December of 2017. Oh, 100%. Not to be delivered until, you know, first quarter 2018 or second quarter 2018. And, uh, you know, Correct. like, just, just imagine. And I just saw uh, I, I saw a picture earlier today of uh, What's Miner had an entire warehouse of, like, brand new ASICs to go out. And just boxes and boxes and boxes, and I'm like, dude, the hash rate is just going to keep going. Uh, you know, maybe it could it could go down here shortly just because of the halving, and a lot of miners just, you know, their their profit margin just got cut in half, or their their revenue just got cut in half on a block by block basis because of uh, the the halving. So, you know, I can see some inefficient miners having to shut down their rigs or at least turn off their old hardware and they'll it'll only be profitable for them to run new hardware but i mean but if price goes yeah. up but if price goes that's mm-hmm. a good point if, if the price, price goes if, up, if the price doubles you can from mine here. on shit hardware and you're still gonna you're still gonna make money even if your electricity costs are above say four or five cents the maybe they'll be okay as long as the price keeps going up but um you know now that we kind of explained the hash rate a little bit uh, I think this is big because it allows for the industry and the mining industry itself to start to hedge their positions a little bit better because as the hash rate goes up, profitability goes down, you can um, use the futures market on the on the potential hash rate of the futures markets for hash and say, okay, I want to lock in some profits here. And it's no different than um, any other commodity industry like farming or airliners airline companies who need to hedge their oil position anything like that or you know fuel um it, it's a good tool to have where you can allow the entrepreneurs to focus on their business and then offload the risk of let's say the hash rate in this case going up or down and let speculators kind of manage that take on that risk for them so it's a great is- market function yeah, I didn't even think about that until you, you know, I was going to say, and you mentioned it perfectly, was like airlines with oil or farmers with, you know, corn, wheat, et cetera. Um, or even like if you think, you know, as you mentioned, other commodities, lumber, et cetera, this is actually, you know, uh, an awesome feature that, you know, who, this may transform mining in the future for everyone. You know, especially you think about large scale operations, um, this, you know, be, trading Bitcoin hash rate futures might become a huge, you know, industry, I, like tradable market for all we know in the next decade. Right. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I, I think about how I didn't even think about that, but like in five years from now, that might be one of the biggest, you know, derivative products to trade. You know, where, Dude, where's. Yeah, I know. It can be huge. That, and that's I mean, why that's, I think that's it's pretty it's, crazy. It's, it's, that's why I think it's big news because this is this is a part of the financialization of Bitcoin, right? And it, there's two ways to look <laughs> at it. On, what? No, just the financialization of everything, too. Well, like, there's so many like, crazy derivatives now. Yeah, it's like on one hand, it's good because, well, on one hand, it's good because the industry is maturing and it's allowing for miners to start offloading some of that risk. And, you know, that cuts into their profit margins, but it might allow for them to last longer in the market or even survive a bear market than getting absolutely washed out because they didn't manage their risk properly or their their treasury uh, Bitcoin stash that they have and they lost it all during a bear market. That would really suck, especially if they're an um, honest miner. Uh, you, you want those people to be participating in the network. But on the other hand, you know, it could be a bad thing because maybe it's too soon for Bitcoin, right? Like you don't want it to get too financialized. Um, I, you know, I, I kind of go back and forth on that one. But if you think about hash rate futures potentially decreasing the volatility of Bitcoin. And, you know, this is what I wanted to ask you. Do you think that's a good thing or a bad thing for Bitcoin? Um, in, in the long run, it's definitely good. Uh, you think about if it, you know, gives, if it gives large company, you know, anyone in general, I guess, or, you know, large or small operations, the ability to, 
hedge, you know, is the correct term to use here, um, against uncertainty per se, in the, you know, in the Bitcoin market, um, you know, that, that changes things, you know, it'd be like, could you imagine, you know, if, if a farmer wasn't able to bet against, you know, the, the price of wheat per se, and the price of, or cattle, and, you know, the, you know, in this case, you know, what just happened recently with coronavirus, you know, certain people might have actually made out better in that case. There might have been, who knows, I'm just making this up a hypothetical situation where a small farm hedged their bet recently, you know, and shorted the whole cattle market or something. And they, you know, they could have made out theoretically better than they would, you know, if everything stayed as normal. Right, right. Um, no, I, it, it's interesting. I was thinking about that because on one hand, uh, in the long term, uh, volatility will ultimately decrease for Bitcoin as the gains in market cap size, you know, you lose a lot of that volatility. And in the long term, like I think gold. that's a, it's, it's like gold versus Bitcoin. It's like when you look at the volatility in gold. Exactly. And even exactly. look at the volatility in silver versus gold. You look exactly. at the swings and it's just different market cap sizes. Right. And, you know, on one hand, I think that's such a good thing for Bitcoin. But on the other hand, I don't want to dampen volatility too much because that volatility is what drives demand and it brings people yeah. into the market. No, people you know, <laughs> traders love volatile stuff. Um, it, it gets more people interested, the volatility, especially the volatility to the upside. Everybody loves that. Um, it, so so that's like I, I hope it doesn't dampen volatility too much because I think volatility is like that viral loop that keeps a, a new group of users coming in every four years. You get new people coming in because it's volatile. The price starts going up or going down and then you get people interested. So, uh, th you know, that's kind of my two cents there. I think it's decreasing the volatility is, you know, both a good thing and a bad thing, depending upon the time frame you're looking at. Yeah. Dude, I keep looking at this gold chart and like against the U.S. dollar, and it's like we might, we may be only a few days away from new all-time highs. Like, I, I mean, it's coming in hot. Like, ooh, what's outside your door? Mustang. Mustang. It just sounded loud and started ripping. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they're always right. ripping down the street. Damn sports cars. <laughs> Well, you know, now that you're talking about gold, why don't we uh, why don't we talk about the next topic, which was QE versus equities? And you had actually sent me a really good tweet um, earlier, and I'll go ahead and read this. It's QE. Oh, oh my bad. Sorry, I totally just oh, did that. I was going to pull up uh, Nikki. It chart says uh, QE didn't make Japanese stocks do much of anything. QE didn't make Euro stocks do anything for the last seven years. QE didn't do much for US stocks, excluding tech. But most people think QE makes stocks go up. And I feel like this is the thing that you and I have kind of been mulling over for the last, even before the market kind of crashed. We were, we've been talking about this for like a year or so. It's like, well, what happens when money printer go burr to US stocks specifically? Because we've talked about the Nikkei 225 for the last year and a half. We've talked about like Deutsche Bank, all the euro banks that have just gotten absolutely wrecked their charts are complete trash like they're heading to all-time lows but then you have this small sector of u.s stocks mainly tech who they're still i mean some of them are still heading towards new all-time highs even after a huge sell-off um in, in like the first quarter of this year dude um, he is done dude yeah like oh my so, god no <laughs> it's done dude <laughs> here's a good example and you know <laughs> and, and you had you had made this a uh, good point it's like you know, sure, can QE pump equities? Absolutely. But if you look at some of the big blue chip, big name American companies like GE that we have on the screen here, they topped out in 2001 or yeah, Four. right around 2001 yeah. time. I mean, they had a stock price of nearly $38 per share and now it's heading, it's under five bucks a share. Yeah. And um, so dude, it look doesn't, look yeah. how many red six month candles in a row, dude. Like you look at that just from like my like just a charting perspective, you look at that and that's just so ugly, and people just hold this and they hold it and they hold it because it's blue chip, IBM blue chip. <laughs> it's like and it's been right. bleeding for years now, just yeah. absolutely it's going and then Boeing, blue chip, a blue chip stock goes down sixty three percent in like a few weeks. <laughs> like come on, yeah, it's it's. it's it's crazy because you think that um, it's not like a catch-all, right? QE doesn't solve all problems in terms of uh, picking winners and losers for 
just stocks in general going up. You know, there's st- now they feel like there's only a handful that are really trying to make a break towards new all time highs. And, um, you know, it's a shame because I don't even know that the QE directly is being it's not being used to buy these stocks, right? But it's the thought that traders and investors know that there's QE available. And so they're just buying the dip anyway to just keep pushing it up on the on the hope that, well, in the worst case scenario, if the trade starts to go against me, um, I know I know the Fed's going to step in and buy my bags in the worst case of scenario. And I just think that it's just a recipe for disaster, a total that's, recipe for yeah, disaster. That's, that's what I keep hearing on Bloomberg and CNBC. The guys are you hear them on there and they're like, well, they're like, they're, you know, the, the Fed's there to you know to keep printing. So that's why we're buying. I, I read a from a pretty big wealth management firm, they sent something to a fan member of mine and I read theirs and their whole thing, you know, their outlook is we're going to buy because the Fed's buying, you know, because of quantitative easing, what the Fed's doing and lowering rates and stuff like that. Um, and I think people think the Fed's going to save them. And while maybe in the short term, things might go well, I think in the long term, they, they will find out that, you know, especially when you see stocks like Boeing or Ford. Or GE or let's see GM. GMs look pretty. Ra- oh, yeah, because GM um, bailed out, so their charts all redone. But they went to the shitter. I mean, it's like we'll see where this all ends up soon. You know, like again, you know, the S and P can still march higher for another, you know, three months or six months. I mean, the election's still six months away. We could go sideways or go higher for six months. I don't think people are ready to handle that, but it's a possibility. Yeah. No, it's um it's crazy how everybody has totally different outlooks on just the impacts of QE and the economy and what it can do and how it makes people think and how it makes people trade and invest. And uh it scares the shit out of me, man. I mean, it's Dude, just Look at yeah, look at I mean, when you okay, from a price action perspective, when you look at and I don't mean to cut you off there, but you're you what you, I know what you mean. It's it's scary because like look at that. Okay. We completely we went down S and P down to twenty two hundred, and by the end of that two month candle, we closed back up at twenty nine hundred. I mean, when you when you inverse this chart or whatever, if I think I can invert it, um, whatever, I'll figure it out. But anyways, my point is, is like that. It's it, it's it's almost a rejection sign. Now, granted, it closed as a red, but like I mean, it wouldn't shock me if all of a sudden by the end of this candle, like we're back at S and P thirty four hundred or thirty five hundred. And I know it's contra- contrarian, but like. When you see all these, you know, suit and ties on the mainstream media telling you that's the end of the world, I just that they're just always wrong. It's just it's just too like obvious now. It's like there's no way everyone's, you know, in the same you know has the same head mindset or whatever is right. There's no way, not now, it's not in the short term. No, yeah, and and I think that's what makes everything so scary because, um, how do you even? How do you invest or how do you take anything seriously anymore with markets that are just kind of total bullshit? Like no. it, it's, it's not based on anything or reality. No, and I, it's, no, it's based on liquidity. Exactly. And it's just – it's it's frightening and it kind of annoys me because um, it, I'm, people are going to – The market doesn't reflect the economy. Yeah, it, it doesn't and that's, and that's scary because there is no – the measuring stick that we use – changes right because you can just increase the money supply debase the currency savers get destroyed the poorest of the poor continue to get wrecked and then wealth continues to get sucked up into the the one percent or whatever they say and that's that's the cantillon effect and it's unfortunately just the name of the game and i hope that we live in a time where that is uh doesn't happen as much or let's say just not possible at all although i'm sure uh something to the effect will still happen but it's just it's really bad. It's really bad. And then watching stocks just go absolutely crazy and QE and that's the only thing that matters. At, uh, Dude, look at this Amazon chart. <laughs> that's what I mean. Yeah, it's it's. I mean, it's oh, really shit, crazy. The six-month, dude. The six-month chart's retarded. It's just vertical. <laughs> it's just it's, like at this point, it's like, it's like okay, where's your next target? Is it 3,000? I mean, we're, we're almost there. I mean, it's chip shot away. You're at 2,400. 600 bucks is nothing now. You know, right. No, I know. Yeah, it's like it's twenty five percent. You know, it's no big deal. Yeah, it's it's nothing. It's and like I hate to even say with like Apple, like what's Apple's gone green on the six month. Like you know, like it's and you know it's it's like shit. 
Um, let's see what I think Netflix went pretty ridiculous, right? Yeah, look at Netflix, dude. Yeah, Netflix chart wow. looked yeah. It, Netflix looked dead a while ago. Look at it, both times it bottomed, and now look where it's going. You think the parabola is over? No, we're going higher. <laughs> like look at that. Yeah, it, no, I thought I thought Netflix was dead for a little bit, and both times saved here at two fifty. And it's like, where, where's Tesla going now? I hate Tesla. I've said it for a while. I want us to rec keep recording until Tesla dies. I have agreed, started to agree with a lot of the things Elon said lately, though. You know. Yeah, like, I know. I, Elon's my boy right now. <laughs> he, he is my boy right now because I agree with his freedom stance and a bunch of other things. But doesn't mean I don't disregard the blatant things that Tesla does that are definitely a little sketchy. But like, even looking at Tesla's two-month chart here, everything is green right now. So, like... You know what I mean? Like, like, like the six yeah. month, like this could get pretty ridiculous here. Like what's, what's stopping? <laughs> it's like price discovery. There's, you know, like unlimited money, you know, what, what stops the stocks from doing the Weimar Republic moves? <laughs> I, I don't right. Know. No, that's what really scares me. Um, because I, I guess that's how every fiat currency eventually dies, right? It, yeah. it becomes unusable, right? Gresham law ends up running in reverse. Uh, want nobody want, nobody wants the money. Nobody you wants want anything. Money. Yeah, no, you literally right. want. You'd rather have hat shoes that are in good condition. You can flip those shoes. You can, you know, have an old laptop. You know, you'd rather have that. I mean, literally anything. I'm just looking around my room right now. <laughs> you literally yeah. anything, anything, you know, because it's it's worth more. Because the next day it'll be worth more because they're printing so much money, and that's what happened. Like you know, it's loaves of bread were were better value than the the mark, the paper mark during the Weimar Republic. Like. And you know how a loaf of bread maybe lasts like a week, maybe before it goes bad, you know, unless right. you're able to freeze it from the refrigerator. But you know, but that wasn't you know it was easy in the 19, early 1920s because that wasn't accessible. So like yeah, you you know like they were putting so much money that the loaf of bread cost of bread, would, you know, prices were doubling over overnight. So let's say you went to the store one day and the cost of bread was one dollar. Next day it's two. Then next day it's four. Next day it's eight. Next day it's sixteen thirty two. You see where I'm going with this. Right. It, it gets it, things get bad really quickly when you start printing, and again that that whole inflation stance started with World War One in 1914 because the Germans didn't want to introduce um, income tax on their people, so they started inflating the currency by taking off the gold uh, standard, along with a lot of other countries that started World War One, and then you know it's obviously their currency inflated, but not that it inflated a good amount. But it wasn't hyperinflation during the war. A lot of countries experienced inflation, but it wasn't extreme. After the wars, when it started happening, 1919, then 1920, and then 21, 22, and it was where it really picked up in the 1923, where it just became ridiculous. Where when you where it's where where you look at a chart that's like a a non log chart, um, like you're just like, what the hell happened here? You know, it's where you get, it's like when you look at the unemployment chart now. Where it's like six million jobs claims in a week, you know, whatever it was, right. it looks ridiculous. Where this number, it just number goes up, ridiculous, you know. Um, so who knows? Because again, we're basing stock prices in dollars. We we right. don't even know what the value of a dollar is, and that's why I try to explain to people. It's like you have no clue what the value of that dollar is. So you're this this price is just abstract. There's no meaning to it, you know. No, I th I think you really nailed it, and. Uh, when I think about you know the topic of QE versus equities, it's just you're right. You don't know what the value of the dollar's worth. The market kind of decides that, and just like you, you we use the Weimar Republic um, example many many times because I think it's it's the most perfect one to use. And it it you know it happens slowly and then all at once, and <laughs> you don't know where you are in that part of the cycle at any one point in time. You only know in hindsight and you know, while I don't think we'll see hyperinflation um, in the next couple of years, that doesn't mean that you're not six months away from all of a sudden that becoming a huge fucking issue. Um, so it could be five years from now, it could be 10 years from now. But you, you kind of just know that it happens eventually once the once you switch to a new money, uh, that, that that's how it usually goes. Um, and it's, yeah, it's just, it's so wild because there's no good way to price anything because the ruler keeps changing and that's you know that's just the money supply increasing and that's why i think um 
you know, I like Bitcoin in this example because you can think about it like a like a ruler, like however many Satoshis it is for that good, you know, at least that measurement's not going to change. The the value that people give it subjectively will definitely be changed. But at least from an accounting standpoint, you can know how many fucking sats you paid for X good at whatever time. And you, there is no adjustment for inflation. Um, so I, I do find that interesting just as like a, a measuring tool. I, I think about it like the metric system, you know. Yeah, I, in in my really dumb opinion, I think if we can break out of this pennant to the upside, we begin the new bull market per se. Like that's the beginning of the march to twenty k and then beyond. But I could be wrong, and then we could. If if, if I am wrong, then I'll see you at the bottom of the other horizontal or the other diagonal line or whatever. <laughs> I'll see you down yeah. at like five thousand or whatever it is somewhere. Yeah. There. I mean, we could shoot the route again, but I'll see you down there somewhere if I'm wrong. We'll find out in 15 days. That's all I know. <laughs> yeah, Fuck. this is just, you know, I think that's kind of a good way to wrap this one up. But it is such an exciting time. I mean, we survived. Uh, we made it to another halving. We got to talk about that. We're not uh, dead from coronavirus. Like, yeah, we're not. We're alive. <laughs> it's it's like, just, it is what a time to be alive. And, you know, it's it's awesome to share this moment, you know, with you and with all the listeners and talk about it because it is, um, it is unbelievable, unbelievable times we are living through. And it's, uh, I think we're in for another wild ride in the yeah. next couple of years. And it's, there's going to be a lot to talk about and I, I really can't wait to do it. It is going to be a ton of fun. Fun but, times um, ahead, one would say. Yeah. It gives, it yeah, gives but, you something to look forward to, I guess, is the way to put it. Like, you're like, oh shit, what's going to, you know, where we're going to be in 2021, 2022. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's, it's hard. It's, it's like I'm living, uh, time's going by really fast and really slow all at the same time. Yes, like I can't believe, I, I can't believe so much time has gone by since I got into Bitcoin. And now it's like every, every week feels like forever, Eternity. even though it's going by so Eternity. fast. It's like, yeah, it's just, no, I mean, we're already, oh. we're almost, um, you know, we're five months into the year now. It's pretty crazy that we're this far into 2020. We're almost at the halfway point again. It's like, fuck. Yeah. Yeah. Especially once it's like really deep, getting deep into summer, that'll, that'll be interesting because yeah. then you have, um, not that anybody's taking vacation this year. So I think this is actually going to be a little bit different. Um, but I am excited for it for sure. Well, I'm pumped. Yeah. No, this was a, this is a good one. This was episode 91. Thank you guys for listening. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe on YouTube. Leave us a comment, uh, leave us a review on Apple podcasts. That definitely helps us move up the ranks. Um, shoot us a DM. Let us know what you want us to talk about. Definitely helps us prepare for these episodes. And yes, yeah, stay safe out there. Get some sun. Enjoy it. I mean, I, I hope everybody has an awesome summer because uh, yeah. I don't want that taken from anybody. Yeah, don't take it. They don't take away our summer. <laughs> yeah, fuck that. Fuck that. Peace. All right, peace.